Good morning, everyone. Ted Bisner. It's November 4th, 2015. It's time to get back on track with our unifying efforts. We the people need to stand together. We the people need to come together. We the people need to stop our petty bickering about bullshit. Okay, if you don't like the way I do something, the way I say something, get over it, okay? If that distraction is going to keep us from unifying, you have to recognize that as exactly what the state wants. Uh, Blaine Cooper's video um, I shared yesterday is a good video, um, and it's exactly what we need to do. There's a lot of us out there with the right idea and the right understanding of what's going on. You know, from my perspective, and and bear with me, I know I don't possess the only perspective, but you have to you have to look at this from somebody that's gone through a lot of this stuff with firsthand experience. Petitioning the courts for anything is like rattling your cup on your jail cell. Rattle, 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 rattle. Um, I'm in the courts now. I've been in the courts for the last five years. And to me, it feels like I'm an inmate already, even though I don't have bars around me currently. Um, in jail, we had uh, these kite slips that we submitted to the warden for stuff, you know, access to law libraries or whatever. And uh, to me, right now, it feels like Initiating a lawsuit in the federal court and the state court is no different than a kite request in jail. Um, you know, you send it through the slit in the, in the door and it goes off somewhere and is handled or addressed by somebody and or not. And you, you don't hear back on it, you know, and it's probably being laughed at, scoffed at, whatever, whatever, whatever. And in the end, you don't get anything you ask for and you are left there basically the same you are as you are now if you're filing a, a suit in court. And it's it's really important that that we the people recognize this. We've lost our ability to seek redress, which is a First Amendment um, right guarant guaranteed and secured by the Constitution of the United States. So what's left? You know, if we can't seek redress, if we can't seek our redresses from the state, from the government, what are we to do? What's left? They're taking away our right to free speech. They're taking away our right to redress. You know, they let us play in the courts, and I don't even know why, really, because um, all they do is create prime examples of how we're losing our liberty, how we're losing our freedom. And that's perhaps why Paul Chamberlain here in Isabella County has created internal court policy um, that he's imposing on we the people that keeps us from having a copy of the real record, what really happened, how the judges are being assholes com completely outside of, outside of their scope. And just, judges don't have judicial immunity when they're not acting in a judicial capacity and crime is not acting in a judicial capacity. How hard is this to understand? You know, they're breaking the law and denying us access to the evidence, the evidence of their crimes being conducted right in court. You know, it was back in Julius Caesar's days when they figured out, you know, the the Roman Empire figured out that the easiest way to capture a nation is to capture its courts. And that's exactly what's going on today. In my opinion, we've lost our judiciary completely here in Michigan. That's why we rated number 50 out of 50 states on the uh, grade assessment that I posted uh, a couple days ago. These are important things, folks, because... These are definite telltale signs that we are headed for some real shit in our lifetime. And it's up to us to do something about it. What are we going to do? 
what are you going to do? Are you going to watch this video and give me a like? Or are you going to start paying attention to what your county judges are doing? How the county judges and the state judges and the federal judges in the state work together? Are we going to start recognizing this stuff? Or are we just going to say it's business as usual and, well, you know, it's the court. We can't always complain if we don't like their decision because they're the supreme masters, right, of the law. Bullshit. These people aren't even following their own laws. Example after example after example. I can show you. I can show you how the Michigan Supreme Court is obstructing justice. What? The Michigan Supreme Court is obstructing justice? Yeah, they create the court rules, which now supersede Michigan law. Wait a minute. The Michigan Supreme Court can't create legislation, you say? Well, of course it can't. That's a violation of the separation of powers provision in the state and federal constitution. But they can create Michigan court rules that supersede Michigan law, which is the same thing. Come on, folks, wake up. The Michigan Supreme Court created a Michigan court rule, MCR 3.920H. Okay, and if you're a respondent parent in a CPS case in Michigan, what that means to you is if you fail to object to, to notice defects in your case, which is, which is the intentional denial of due process, you forever, you forever waive notice defects. And this is all supported and sponsored by the Michigan Supreme Court. This is why Mary Kelly left the bench, okay, because I came out with this earlier this year. You know, the attacks on me are not arbitrary, folks. The attacks on me are out of retaliation for what I'm bringing to the table. Nobody's ever come back to me and said, well, Ted, you just don't understand um, the Michigan court rules and blah, 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 and, and argued with me in a manner that would make me believe that, oh, yeah, I was wrong. Okay, you're right. No, these, these people don't do that because I'm not wrong. And it's not hard for us to understand these things. But what are we told every single day? Well, you need a lawyer. You got to have 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 a lawyer. Why? Because I'm not capable of reading? This is how simple it is, folks. If you have any case in any court having to do with any law and the violation of any law, statute, ordinance, code, whatever, and you are incapable of reading one page, that describes and defines the laws that, you know, people are alleging that you broke, then, yeah, go get a lawyer. If you can't read a page, if you can't figure it out for yourself. You know, the law is not a hard thing. Understanding the laws that affect your immediate situation are, are actually quite simple. And that's the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be simple. Okay, we the people are supposed to be able to decipher this law and handle these things ourselves. We have to start participating or we're going to lose our country. This is serious business, folks. If you can't figure out for yourself that there is no law in Michigan requiring handgun registration if you can't go to the law they claim, you know, is the, is the authority for this requirement when it's not a requirement, you know, then, then yeah, go register your handguns. You know, we have to start questioning authority at every juncture now. Why? Because my sheriff's telling me I have to register my handgun. I asked him to show me the authority. He sent me this Michigan compiled law. It didn't even have the word registration in it. But he's using that law to make it a requirement for me to register my handgun or he's going to keep it when he stole it in the first place? Come on, folks. Things are so effed up right now. It doesn't take 10 minutes to find something effed up here. We have to start trying to, to find these things and to pronounce them and, and to publicize them. They're not going to get any mainstream media attention. It's up to us. We have to share this stuff with our neighbors, with our friends, with our community. There's no requirement to register your handgun in Michigan. 
it's only a way to make us all look like we're outlaws. Yeah, I'm not going to register my handguns. It's not a lawful requirement. Okay, and the sheriff keeping my handgun because I'm refusing to register it is is another obstruction of justice. Okay, what part of shall not be infringed doesn't my sheriff understand? Well, he broke into my house, broke into my safe, stole all my guns, and now he's keeping my handgun, my Beretta 9mm A1 with the tack rail because I'm not going to register it? That's an infringement? Of course it is. The right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. So you're going to keep my handgun because I didn't register it? Yeah, that's an infringement. That's a violation of my constitutional rights. Come on, folks. Let's start working together. It's, it's time to work together. It's time to rally. Till next time.